Scannell, how are you? Hello to everyone joining us today. It's uh, great to see you, Chef Doug, Douglas Trudeau. We have a, a special guest today. Actually, we haven't, I haven't done this really uh, during the day for, for you know, quite a bit. And, um, and I met you a couple weeks ago or beginning of September. And I was like, okay, this guy's cool. And <laughs> let's, let's just, you know, see what he can do. And anyway, it's really great to see you today. And, and I always think that people do a better job introducing themselves. And so, you know, say, say hi to our community and tell us about yourself. Right on. Uh, so, Skeno, hello. How's everybody doing today? Um, my name is Chef Douglas Trudeau. I'm from the Ojibwe and Mohawk Nation. Um, I grew up in the city of Windsor, Ontario. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I just found that out also that uh, you went to high school there. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, a little bit about myself. I started uh, my culinary journey pretty much in 2002, I'd say. Um, when I just finished up playing junior lacrosse, I moved out uh, to Victoria, BC, and I was still playing a little bit of lacrosse there too, but I, I really started taking um, a real interest in culinary. And uh, I guess it all started with uh, some teammates, uh, parents smoking fish up island, and they happened to be, uh, you know, native as well. And, you know, we just hit it off. And uh, so that's kind of really all started. And um, the... Uh, I, I remember, well, I guess my first job, I guess we'll go back a little bit, sorry, it was probably about grade nine, just to kind of help um, my family out. We didn't have a lot of money, and if I wanted anything extra, you know, that's where that had to come from. So my first job was a dishwasher, and uh, I just thought it was the coolest thing ever, just uh, listening to these guys swear and playing with knives and fire, and I was like, whoa, it was like a bunch of pirates. So I, I just thought it was really cool. And it was, uh, it had a same aspect of um, relationship with lacrosse and your teammates and, you know, really depending on each other to get the job done. And, uh, you know, that's uh, kind of that in a nutshell, you know, some of my accomplishments, um, you know, cooking wise, I was uh, fortunate enough in 2008 uh, to win a top chef in my company, which uh, got me uh, some recognition and I got to go to Vegas. I got to go to the CIA, the Culinary Institute of America in California. Um, got to work with some top chefs along the world. Um, so, and then, you know, I got a couple of years ago, I uh, was fortunate enough. I got to cook for Obama and Clinton. Um, when some of their flights that were coming out of uh, Toronto, I was able to supply what, what they needed. And that was pretty cool. Um, fast forward to today, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a husband, I'm a father, and I'm a proud owner of my company, uh, Four Winds Indigenous Catering. That just kind of happened on accident. And, uh, you know, I was uh, recently let go from my job. And I think this was probably the best push off the cliff I needed to join to jump into my entrepreneurship as a business owner. Um, you know, and starting out with hardly any money and no help really from, a, you know, from family, we didn't have a lot of money, still don't. Um, but I've had a few good friends that have been definitely, you know, they know my talent and, uh, you know, they know, uh, I've got a good respect with a lot of people to, to make those uh, needs to come back to them that helped me. So, you know, there's been a huge, uh, you know, a lot of help in helping me get to, to my goal. So it's, uh, that's kind of why I'm here today. And, you know, we met, um, like you said, at the C at the survivor secretariat, and uh, I've been doing some work down there with Laura Arndt and, um, yeah, it's been fantastic to, to connect and, uh, you know, really get back to real good food and, you know, real food. Right on. That's what I, that's what I found actually when um, when I met you in the kitchen at the se secretariat there on Six Nations, they had an um, I guess a kind of an open house where they made a, a few announcements and invited community in to um, to see their new space. And as I was walk like walking around, I'm seeing you know little plates being delivered uh, out to the guests. And when I peeked in the kitchen, there you were just like all proudly you know, sharing, sharing your, uh, I guess it was like your, um, shepherd's pie kind of, right. Yeah. And yeah. That yeah. Shepherd's pie That was, I took with me on the road and ate in my car on the way. It was so delicious. Um, and you know, it's, uh, 
and you were inspiring in that moment. I was like, this, this guy is awesome. And, you, oh, you know, just welcoming and wanting the way that you spoke was about your food was medicine. And that's, that's really, you know, the connection when you you're meeting uh, for me anyway, meeting other indigenous people, urban indigenous people who found their way back to culture, you know, and really understanding the purpose and the gifts that they have now is and how you're putting it to um, to use in your community for healing is awesome. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I owe a lot to my wife on that. Like you said, I, I, I was a city Indian, right? So it's uh, learning everything now is is what it's it's full steam with, with you know, I, you know, you said it's, you know, we're, we're um, we only have a couple gifts really in this world. And, you know, some have more than others, but we at least all have one thing. And, you know, I'm fortunate to have a couple with, with my food and, and dealing with people, um, you know, and, that, you know, I, I really want my food to always be welcoming, you know, thinking of a one dish, one spoon, um, you know, community and, and uh, you know, that really thing that's, you know, that, that really I love is family time and sitting down together. You and, know, uh, for sure. And that's um, a, a value that. Um, is, I mean, we should, all families should have, but, uh, but I know that that's, um, that's another thing that we all have in common or should have in common, right? Is gathering around the table, eating, sharing stories, honoring the food that we have, being present with it. Um, you came out to visit us. I invited you out to see us in Milton and <laughs> get to know each other a little bit, find out more about each other's stories and, um, and just see how we can, you know, elevate each other. Right. And so in that moment, I introduced you to Jamie at Country Heritage Park. Shout out to Country Heritage Park. They've been awesome, um, you know, partners and relationship building for, you know, towards reconciliation, basically. Right. They support a lot of the work that Grandmother's Voice does, bringing community together and uh, when when I introduced you to Jamie and the conversation started talking about, we started talking about what he does there. And then next thing you know, I was like, you know, he's like, hey, I have some chickens. Yeah. And this is kind of what inspired this conversation. And, and just like, I think both of our creative sense was like, hey, let's share this. How can we share this opportunity to introduce you, talk about some chickens and and really engage people, you know? And, and yeah. I, I thought that was really cool. And, you know, once again, you know, huge uh, shout out to you and, and your company there with uh, Grandmother's Voice making this happen. And, you know, obviously getting, uh, you know, allowing me to have a foot in the door to, uh, you know, represent myself, uh, my food, and, you know, obviously the communities where I come from. And, and you know, most of all, you know, uh, my kids. Yeah, it, about about community, it's so important. Um, you know, I like to, you know, bring it back to how we started to do this stuff with grandmother's voice. It was really just the grandma saying, you know, when COVID happened, we need to, we need to reach the people. And which is why we're doing a live right now in the middle of a day, you know, some, we just have to follow, we just have to follow spirit. That's what we do, you know, what we're guided to do. And so, uh, the day that we, we met and talked on the land and Jamie said, Hey, take some chickens. We, um, I went yesterday with one of our helpers, Joanna and uh, one of our, our volunteer helpers, which, you know, a shout out to all of our volunteers at grandmother's voice. We wouldn't be where we are today without you. Uh, you know, came with me, we loaded up chickens and we drove them to six nations. We delivered to the long houses, the, the five long houses, uh, to the um, food bank, to some grandmas that we knew that couldn't get out, and um, and you know to other people that were that had some projects that they were working on, and and we found out just from picking up the phone and calling a few people, and we were able to deliver 160 chickens, uh, frozen chickens, yesterday to the to to the reserve, and. And it was like the best day I had. Well, one of the best days I've had in the last few weeks. Uh, September 30th was was pretty amazing. And so was the 27th. And so it was all of these other days that we get to spend time together uh, yep. with people who have the same, you know, goals and aspirations to, you know, change our, like, return back to our culture. Yeah. I, and that's the same with my cooking too, right? It, it's just uh, reintroducing food that, should have never been lost 
you know, and we look at all the problems in the world of obesity and, you know, um, hormones and steroids and everything being injected into food. So, you know what I mean? It's, you know, you know, I'm following like great chefs out there, like uh, Sean Sherman and, and, you know, a lot of those indigenous chefs and, uh, you know, I'm just like, why can't I? So I think, uh, you know, now is uh, my turn to, you know, help out and, and, you know, teach and, you know, if you can change a few people's lives with the way they eating, well, that's uh, that's a good uh, effect that uh, comes into play and starts in your family and it just cycles down as opposed to, you know, these quick stops to, to get not real food that's just killing us, not just um, mentally, but, you know, spiritually as well. You know, I was listening to uh, somebody speak the other day and they were talking about how, you know, all these foods that aren't real and it's really not good for your soul because it's not real. And I really thought that had... Uh, a real good um, good punch to that. I really enjoyed hearing that. It really resonated with me. So that's kind of what I'm up to today. And we're going to do a little bit of uh, work with these chickens that, you know, obviously that uh, grandmother's voice supplied everybody with down on the res. And um, yeah, I'm ready to start cooking. I'm interested in see, see what we can come up with here. Yeah, so that's I, exciting. Yeah. So I did write a recipe. I'm going to do my best to try and remember it off the top of my head. Um, we'll pop it up in front of me, so just yeah. in case you you miss something. <laughs> All right, but so, it, it's yeah. Go ahead. Did you want me to get into this, or did you want to keep going? Yeah. yeah, go ahead, and then we can just you know and just let you do your thing because you know this is we're like let's have some fun with this. We we have some chickens. You picked up a few chickens to test, you know, yep. to see if they were, and um, and it was like let's do something with this then. And so you've come up with this awesome recipe herb roasted chicken with three sisters succotash and that's on um on i i, I sent all of the um or posted the ingredients on our facebook page so um, all right on. go for it <laughs> so basically i'll just go through this stupid french term it's just called mise en place to have everything ready in front of you pretty much um so i've got my corn i've got some scallions here as well i've got some beans I've got my herbed butter, which I'm going to use for the chicken. Uh, and in this here, it's just a compound butter. Uh, basically, uh, I've got some garlic. I've got thyme. Uh, I've got some lemon zest as well. And uh, I think salt and pepper. That's about it for this one. I've got some lemons here that I'm going to use through my roasting process. Uh, I've got some beans here. I've got my squash and some of the herbs that I like to use. I'm um, going through with all this here. So one of the first things I did, obviously, is uh, to save some time. I've already done this already, but uh, I've already washed the chicken uh, inside, outside, and the cavity, and I've pat dried it as well. Um, that here is just going to make sure everything kind of stays in and nice flavors happen, and it's really nicely infused. So the first thing I'm going to do is this neck here was attached. I, I've taken this off. I've cut it. Uh, I'm going to be using this here, roasting that off for my chicken jus. Uh, which is going to be mostly all the liquids that we used here from the stock, um, some of the natural aromatics from the onions, the garlic, the lemons, and sage, and uh, all that's going to cook with the bird at the same time and the drippings from the bird, and then we're going to make a really nice sauce that I've been making already for about four hours already on that. So it's going to be pretty damn good. So one of the first things I'm going to do is, uh, this one's a little different than the one I had this morning. But we'll try and see. So I'm just going to lift some of this skin up right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rub this compound butter underneath it. And uh, it's just going to add a lot of nice flavors to it while also, um, you know, kind of crisping, crisping it up also. I want to have a nice crisp skin, obviously. So I just kind of peeled back the skin a little bit here. I've got my compound butter. So I'm just gonna take a little bit like this and I'm just gonna gently massage inside without trying to tear the skin of the bird. And I guess you can see that pretty good, eh? Yeah, awesome. Like you've done this before. Eh, once or twice. Right? I, used to, I used to be a regional chef for a corporate restaurant and Oh, I'm just so glad I'm out of that stuff. So yeah. talking in front of people and, you know, being on the mic and, you know, showing food and talking about food is it's just something that uh, I've been doing for quite some time. So used to be real scared, uh, stage fright, but, you know, kind of 
comes with it after a little bit of a while. So I've just rubbed um, some, some of that compound butter there that I did. So this here is just a salt pepper mix. So I basically just do probably about 70, 30, 80, 20 salt to pepper ratio. So I'm just going to kind of season the bird. And I'm going to put another glove on here. And while the cavity is out also, I'm going to make sure that I get inside the bird as well to just make sure I get a nice flavor everywhere. So I'm going to add some of that into the bird. That's good. So I'll get that out of the way. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to stuff this bird. So I'm going to use a little bit of parsley. I used to be afraid of to of cooking full birds. I don't know why, and maybe it was just, I feel no offense to my mom, like traumatized from like, cooking turkeys and family dinners, and it always seemed like such work, right? It was it's, like in all day out the the, and I was like, oh my gosh, but when I started to cook chickens, I'm like, this is the easiest best thing to cook. Yeah, and you actually get a good yield out of it too, you know what mm. I mean? So there's so many things you could do afterwards, whether, you know, make a nice chicken sandwich, you could do quesadillas, exactly. you know, a nice soup with the bones, stocks. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's endless. Yeah. So here's the herbs I'm going to be using. So it's just um, some thyme, some parsley, and some sage. And I'm just going to put this here into the cavity of the bird. And this here is just going to release a lot of nice aromatics while it's cooking. Mm -hmm. Keep it nice and moist also so it doesn't dry out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to uh, truss this bird just to try to um, make everything stay cook evenly and also to get the, um, the, the breast really nice and plump so it pushes it a little bit forward. So. It's going to take my butcher's twine right here. I'm going to slide it under the bird. And yep. I'm going. There's a question. Any lemon in there? But yes, there was, right? Lemon? Yep. Yeah. Lemon. It was like a half a lemon or something I saw. Yeah, I just before. put about a half a lemon into it. Yeah. So I'm just going to wrap this around here. Like who to thunk I'd be doing doing a cooking show? Okay, really? I well, Not that I'm good at this or anything. I'm just I'm just doing it because I just thought it was pretty cool. You know, the response to delivering chickens, you know, really, it was just a question. Hey, do you want to deliver chickens? And we're like, yeah, let's deliver chickens. And um, and it's becoming a regular thing. So um, why not? I, I never did. have chef's twine in my house. I should really I just it, it just makes sense. Right. You know, I actually had to go get some. Oh, so, okay. yeah, yeah don't, you, don't feel bad. Okay. Half the times, if I do get them from a supplier or wherever I'm getting them from, it's mostly all done for me. So I'm just going to tie that there. I think, what was the thing I used? I used some, uh, I have these little metal pins. Um, I don't even know where I got them from. I think it may have been a, a grandmother's or something or someone's, my mother-in-law's. Oh, okay that just like pin the skin together and hold them in place. Old grandma's think, pantry. Yeah, right? The things you find. So we got this. I'm just gonna wrap this around here. Sorry, it's kind of hard to, to zoom in or whatever. And uh, No, it looks like see, uh, see I'm, I'm seeing doing. it pretty good here. So I've got this all tied up now. Just gonna finish this knot. And so one of the reasons you came out to visit the space in Milton was that you are um, in a couple of weeks going to be uh, sharing some teachings with a grade five groups, right, from the Halton Catholic District School Board. And yeah, uh, it's like Indigenous education happening there for two weeks for grade fives. Yeah, that's, that's really something cool. Um, you know, part of my brand as well in my company is, you know, not only am I cooking, I'm also, you know, a chef is also a teacher. And, uh, you know, and uh, I, I like to be a student of life. I think I've got a Harvard education in messing up. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, 
it's, you know, I think your biggest teacher are your failures or lessons that, you know, if you really pay attention to it and, uh, you know, that's what I love about, you know, not only being a chef, but just a human being is the things that, you know, go wrong, go wrong. And then another day happens. It's not a continued, um, onslaught of brutalness. You know what I mean? Um, sometimes it may last for a little bit, but at the same time, you just keep fighting and just keep doing what you love. And eventually the ball will bounce your way, which is always nice to have. It's funny so you I'm, say that this morning. I just want to share a little something right here. The um, yeah. Eckert Toll. You know who okay. he is? Anyway. Yep. So, right. So anyway, this morning, uh, because I've just been so busy, I got up and I did a meditation um, by him, love him. It just helps to balance me and remind me, right? And he said that there's no absolute failure or absolute success because, um, like, basically, success turns into failure because it has limitations and it comes to an end. Oh, and, nice. Yeah. And failure is often a great opportunity. I, um, I, I'm such a nerd. I love reading and stuff like that. And, and you know, I, the first thing of failure is, is, you know, you break it down first attempt and learning. The, yeah, uh, and I, I, I thought that, I thought that was very powerful and um, yeah. Yeah. So right now I'm just adding a little bit of sunflower oil to the chicken and mm -hmm. I'm going to just add a little bit more salt and pepper. I use a little garbage bag here. So I, uh, easy cleanup. So what I've got is my roasting pan right here. Uh, this is going to be um, my chicken jus. Um, so basically what I've got in here, I've got some onions, I've got garlic, I've got some fresh sage as well. And I've got a little bit of a drip tray or a false bottom or a wire rack, whatever you want to call them. And I'm also going to put in here is this neck also. So this is just going to add a bunch more flavor for your sauce keep it as authentic as possible and you know we're trying to be sustainable and we use everything that we can right yeah so i've just got some regular um chicken and roasted garlic um chicken broth so i'm just going to fill this pan here probably just enough to the wire rack and then i'll place my bird on top of this So essentially this here is what's going to be my main sauce that's going to come out of everything. So not only is this going to infuse and everything's going to cook here, um, everything that's cooking inside the bird and the natural oils and juices from the bird is actually going to um, fall into this as well. And we're actually going to try and drain the cavity um, throughout the cooking process to add more flavor. Awesome. So, I love how you're putting your gloves on, taking them off, gloves on. Oh, Talk to me. I, is it because you're on the screen or is it because it's you're yeah. touching things? and? Well, the touching things and you know what I mean? I'm, I'm working from home today, so I don't uh, really want to put everything all over the cabinets. My wife will call me out on that <laughs> and I don't like that. So if I can keep her happy, then yes. that's yes. that. So here's this right here. Um, this is the, the pretty much the start of it. So I've just seasoned it right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it into the oven. Uh, I'm going to hit it at high temperature for the bit for probably about 20 minutes at 400. I was playing with the temps earlier. It didn't work on, on the recipe. So I think 400 is the best, not 350. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a little bit of color on the top and then I'm going to tent it with some foil and then I'm going to let it cook probably for the next hour and a half and then the remaining 25, 30 minutes. I will take the foil off and really get a nice skin on top and I'll even rotate the bird so it gets a little bit of a skin underneath. So I'm just going to pop this into the oven and uh, just give me one second. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Facebook user who's, who's showing up here. I'm kind of guessing it's Peggy. I don't know. Is it you? Um, who else would be joining me in a midday? Like we don't have anything else to do today. Um, but I'm uh, I'm really grateful that that uh, I was like, hey, Doug, we should do a Facebook Live and introduce you. And you know, you sound cool, man. I think people want to hear your story. And he was like, Yeah, okay. You know, it wasn't. Uh, it didn't even. You didn't even think about it. Yeah, I mean, this was put together real, uh, real funny wise. Yeah. You know, you know it's uh, something that uh, I, I never really thought of doing, but you know, an opportunity not to answer the door and. 
you know, it's kind of what I'm trying to teach my daughter right now. She just got asked to play with the U15s and she's super scared and she's only 13. And I'm just like, well, you know, kind of run towards your fear a little bit and see what happens. So, you know, I was like, all right, let's try it. Let's do it. And I I'm, I'm hope you're having fun because I know I am. Yeah, I love, for sure. I, I love cooking and I love talking. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this here now. You guys are going to follow with me to my to my kitchen here. Nothing special, no MTV crib stuff, no crystal in the fridge or nothing like that. Um, so I'm just going to grab my ingredients for uh, my succotash now. Um, so the chicken is going. This here is my sauce that I've been going for about four hours now. Um, so this was all the drippings that was at the bottom of the pan. Nice. And now with the neck in there, so I've always, and I've had this going at a real hard boil. Now it's just simmering. And then what I'm going to do in a little bit is I will... Um, drain this here or strain it sorry and just try and really push out as much flavor as i can i'll probably thicken it up a little bit depending on how it looks um and then what we'll do is that's going to be just a nice finish for over top of the chicken and the succotash to give a real nice flavor so what i'm going to do is if i'm just going to grab my ingredients from over there and just give me a sec and we'll start cooking Awesome. Oh, sorry. I guess I guess you're not our our visitor is not who I thought you were, but so happy that you're here with us. Uh, kind of. I'm. It's always nice when people visit, and uh, and we also know that people will watch this after. Uh, all of our videos are still on on our um, YouTube channel. You can visit pretty much any time. There's some really good videos on our on our YouTube channel. Really. Oh good. yeah. Yeah, I I really got to look into those things. You know, I apologize for not. It's just I, like it's uh, since I, I started, like it's I, I can't believe how busy I am. I, I can, but I can't, I guess you could say. And, and you know, it's not a bad thing. Um, but, you know, it's just like everyone, have you checked this out? Have you checked that? I'm like, oh, I want to. I'm putting it on the list. But, you know, between, you know, the, the catering and the food sovereignty workshops that I do, mm -hmm. um, my daughter's hockey takes up a lot of time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know. Oh, about it. It, yeah. It, but you know, there's no other place I'd rather be than the kitchen That's or the it. arena. Right. Actually, today it was one of those days. I was I've been so busy, and I had a packed day today as well. And that's why I was like, no, you know what? I missed I missed this as much as you know. This was just something that we did on the fly. Uh, people loved it, and people were asking, like, when are you going to start doing lives again? And and when are you going to start sharing? And so there's quite of quite a bit um going on but hey yeah you pick up where you're going right now so we don't keep you yeah no worries so um i've just heated up some sunflower oil it's going in this pan i've got it on medium heat and in this let me ask part, you about sunflower oil though does that kind of replace like canola oil or whatever corn, like, it's, a, it's a good uh it's a nice high um, heat or high heat yeah and you know just uh you know, I try to use natural, you know, really good mm -hmm. things, you know, especially, you know, that that was going back to, you know, for the longest time since we started, right? So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's one of those things I try not to use canola, I try not to use olive, mm -hmm. but, you know, yeah. I just really try to play homage to that there and the way it's yeah, hopefully yeah. taken care of. So I'm just adding some onions and garlic. Nothing like onions and garlic cooking, I'm just oh. saying. No kidding. I think that's my favorite cologne. That's right? I, I, I only smell like onions and garlic or smoked fish. Uh, so, ooh, smoked fish. Nice. So uh, my wife loves it, but she hates it at the same time. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So so I'm just going to let this go here for probably four, three, four minutes. I'm just going to try and get it nice and soft. Um, this here is my squash that I prepared earlier. So I just kind of diced it into to about half inch cubes. And uh, we're just going to saute this off here as well. So this process here will probably take anywhere from about 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure things are nice and soft. And then you're going to be ready to cook. So while that's going, so this is my sauce here. I've already talked about the chicken jus. I'm just going to strain this here into another, um, another pot. It smells so good. Oh my gosh. I wish, I, I, I wish I, that. I was like, I wish, I wish you could smell it. So, um, so there's my lemons. There's some tarragon, garlic. I got the neck in there, um, some other herbs. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just really going to try to um, just squish 
as much out as I can just to get more flavor. Amazing. Just really try to get everything out of there as much as possible. So Chef Doug, there's a question here. And normally too, um, if, if he wasn't on his phone, he'd be able to see your chats, um, but it's it's kind of difficult. Uh, so I'm just going to read what this um, this question is. It says, um, if there's allergies to sunflower oil, and is there anything that anything else that you would recommend besides coconut oil either? And anything like avocado? I love uh -huh. avocado. That's a high heat one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you can use that as well, or you know, worst case scenario, you can. The choice is yours. So to use olive oil as well. Um, you know, I, I'd be a liar if I said I didn't, but I try not to. You know, some things are available some days, some days aren't. And uh, some days we just got to make things uh, on the fly adjust. For sure. So this, is, so this is my sauce here. So I will probably have to thicken it up just a little bit, which will just be a little bit of cornstarch and a little bit of water. And I'll add a little bit more fresh parsley to this, but it's going to. Nice. Nice and citrusy. So the onions are going here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to add my butternut squash here. So when when um, I see chefs, because my kids love to watch, like top chef, and I think actually, what's it? Uh, one of our community members, or one of the community members in um, Six Nations, is going to be on Top Chef Canada. Yeah, Chef Tanya. Yeah, Tanya. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'm really good friends with her and her husband. Um, oh, cool. I've, I've, I've known, uh, and my wife actually knows them very well too. So it's kind of, you know, after I met my wife, we were just kind of discussing about similar people that we know. And that, that was one of the names. You know, I played against the, the Cody and lacrosse since I was five or six. So oh, it's, awesome. uh, yeah, and then uh, it's really awesome to see us being recognized. I don't, uh, for me, you know, personally, I, I just love doing what I do right now. Um, I don't want to, I've had my moments in the sun, sun I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. I just, I just think uh, for me, I'm at a really good place in my life that I don't need too much. Um, you know, I, uh, I try to live within my means and uh, I had a humbling experience that only made that happen. And I don't think I could have been taught any other way. Mm -hmm. um, so awesome. the, uh, that's kind of, how, how that is for how I see myself anyways. But, uh, you know, I remember I competed in Vegas a couple times. Um, that's back when I was really drinking a lot and now I've been sober for eight years. So mm -hmm. congratulations. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. That's a, it's a huge accomplishment for me, especially if anybody's really knowing me, I was, uh, that's amazing. Kind Good of, for you. that's kind of a wild one. So, but now I'm just real calm and just soft spoken. Nice. Um, Getting to yeah. yourself. Right? Yeah. There's an, some nice comments here about, um, well, first, congrats, Chef, came up just now. Um, question, I was going to ask about olive oil myself. Um, I see that chefs use olive oil and butter together. Yep. What is that? Is that to level out the low, low heat to high heat? Um, um, that and it's what kind most... of olive oil if you do use it? So I like, if it's olive, olive oil, I, I'll use an Evo, extra virgin olive oil. Um, you know, it's, it's probably 10, 11 bucks for a good brand. Um, they have some cold pressed ones as well. Um, but you don't have to get anything too crazy, I, I, in my opinion. I think, um, you know, when it comes down to the mixture of butter and oil, I think that just comes down to the chef and, and whatever he's trying to accomplish. I know for me, I'm using, you know, I'll use it for something on one side and maybe something on another side. So I might use the butter like I did for the chicken, but I might, like I'm doing now, sauteing everything with uh, oil. So it just basically Amazing. comes down, basically comes down to preference of the chef and whatever his techniques are. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And then um, they're sharing their immune, their immune booster. I love that one too. I use that too. Raw gold. Organic honey, lemons, fresh ginger, and ground cinnamon. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. it, it's all natural and real, right? So, yeah. you know, that's the problem with, with um, you know that uh, the world is gone since they've tried to make everything they thought was better, 
which is in fact just killing people left, right, and center. And maybe that was their plan all along to make people weak to not fight back. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, everything that's in a can, everything that is, it's, it's not real. Yeah. The, uh, it, and it's sad. And there's another thing, you know, we just got out of a real bad, uh, pandemic and, um, th- there'll be another one eventually too, but this one here is going to be called, uh, from the antibiotics. Um, mm-hmm. and most people don't know is all the foods that we're eating, you know, like these chickens here, like these were raised properly, how I've seen it out uh, at the farm, right? They're not living in, in a milk crate of, you know, 30 of them in there and they're not pumped all these, um, hormone or sorry uh antibiotics to keep them alive yeah and so 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 what's happening is subconsciously um all that food we're eating has antibiotics in it and when we get sick um doctors prescribe what three five days to take your antibiotics so subconsciously we're always eating antibiotics so what happens when we really get sick and the antibiotics don't work because we've been given science chicken yeah, yeah. You, you know, and uh, that, that's... Come on, don't so depress me. Keep cooking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it's real. It's real. That's real, right? It, it, All it of it is, is the reality. It. And and some of us know more than others. We just don't want to know, right? Yeah. And you, look, you look at... Um, Excuse me. You, you know, you look at uh, other uh, Indigenous chefs here the, at Cookham's Kitchen here in Toronto. Um, you know, everyone was giving him, beating him up over seal. You know, that's not right. You know what I mean? And, and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, well, who's taught you that? Well, the government's taught us that. And because they need their money, blah, 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 whatever it is. But at the end of the day, like people's opinion is just manipulated by the government, unfortunately. And what's if I was to choose knowing where the chicken's coming from or the seal's coming from, well, I think, you know, knowing where you're going to eat is, you know, half the battle, but, you know, choices are going to be up to everybody. Um, but I know I would take seal over how some of these people raise chickens. So this is still going. It's probably about Sorry, another I four. I just had someone at my door. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Is it the pizza? I missed that. No, no. <laughs> um yeah there was a movie i'm just trying to think of the name of it that i watched about the the seals and you know when we start talking about like propaganda and like there's just so much happening in the world right there's just so much um that that you know people i think are just like they chose to block it out you know you have those conversations where you know you're you're visiting friends and people just don't want to hear the truth you know, yep. and some people will say, oh, that's propaganda or that's it. It's it's a reality. And I think that that's exactly where we are right now in society with, you know, the um, uncovering of the truth of, you know, residential school and just the truth that this company, this country was built off of that. Yeah. You know, things like that happening. Control. Like when we wonder why we are where we are today, like in our society, what happened to Indigenous people has now, I say, seeped into our communities, right? And we are where we are today because of the foundation and yep. how it's built. I, I, I 100% agree. But so what, what is, I think, what I love about being in the realm that I'm in right now with the, the grandmothers and elders and people like you and, you know, people that are just like waking up to re- returning back to our original instructions and basic like understandings. And is that, you know, this is really how we're going to be able to live longer in 100%. World together. And so, um, when I, you know, just listening to them, reminding us, like, I, I crave to be around the grandmothers and elders and not, not that I want to make mistakes, but when I do so humbly, you know, they share, like they correct me and they, I don't want to actually use that word correct, but remind me, they remind yeah. me of how I can be either reflecting or reacting in a different way. They never tell me I'm wrong. Right. They never it's never about discipline or shame or it is just such a uh, 
our indigenous way is so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. The, and, we, um, and it's all about the learning too, right? Is I, I think sometimes too, you know, especially you know, younger generation or my generation. That's why I don't talk too much because when I talk, I just I'm not learning anything. And, and you know, and, and the problem with um, a lot of people is when you're trying to talk or having a deep conversation is they're already thinking what they're going to talk about and they're not really engaged they're, they've got their own thing to talk and for me like, like I'm, I'm actually very quiet and so this is probably the most talking i really do um you know besides if i'm working and doing a work, workshop on anything like that but um yeah like the communication is so important between people and you know when you open your ears you really do learn and when you open your heart you even learn more oh completely i'm guilty i'm so bad with like you know my mind is constantly going um at, which is why i listen to eckhart toll and do meditation as much as i can because i'm like like i'm so excited yep. around people even like with you we're we are both kind of going back and forth and we first met each other because we're so excited you know you have You've met someone with passion and, and so, yeah, but you're completely, completely right. Just knowing that, um, you know, when you're just being present and somebody, you know, with someone else and hearing their stories and sharing, letting, giving them that space to share their message and stories is so important, especially right now. Especially yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's one of, you know, it's, uh, it's been a little tough for, you know, everything that's happened with residential schools and everything like that and the learning curve and the, um, the education wise of, of how to deal with things. Right. And, uh, and, mm -hmm. and that's been a really dark time. So now we're all trying to, you know, heal, we're all trying to get better and, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, you know, are, is anybody perfect? No. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, we're all trying to just be the, the happiest person that we could be and comfortable in our own skin that we're walking in. Um, but, you know, those are the things I really want to try to teach my kids is, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, you talk about the learning. We talked about fear earlier and, and yeah. stuff like that. And, you know, we had some pretty cool talks about that. But, you know, how You'll do you be able to show this video to your kids after just so you know? Oh, you they, don't want to hear, they, they don't want to hear me talk. Yeah, I know. I, I say that too. So um, one of our guests was saying they that because um, I saw, you know, as we were talking, you were just like cooking down. What, what were you doing there? And is that a cast iron pan? Uh, this isn't a cast iron. This is just a regular nonstick. So basically what I did, um, I drew, after I took everything out of my sauce, I just kind of um, thickened it up. I just used a little bit of water and a little bit of cornstarch. So it's just enough to kind of coat my spoon. Mm. Um, so no, what I'll do is about that, like how thick and how much you want to put in to make it. Yeah. Like it, once again, it all comes down to, to the chef's thing. Like I just want it to really stick, but I don't definitely want it runny. Um, cause then it just doesn't do anything. It's just going to be a big pool. Uh, but I will add a little bit of fresh herbs to that just to finish that off a little bit of fresh parsley and a little bit of tarragon and probably to season it one more time. Um, so what I just did mm, here just to okay. save space. I just, this is just my, uh, the beginning of the succotash here. Um, I just roasted off the squash here. Um, and now I'm going to get the corn just to save space in the pan. And I'll add that into that. And what I'll do is I've already got the chicken that's already done. So I was a little bit ahead of the game. I'll show you how we'll plate it. And uh, I wish you were here to try it all, but we got the recipe. And I think it's uh, pretty accurate to, to what I wrote. So it's uh, yeah. always it's always one of the things when you're cooking, you just do it for me anyways. I don't really have recipes. It's just, I just know, I just do. I've just been doing it for so long that uh, I don't have many gifts. I can't, I don't think I could change a tire, but uh, <laughs> I, could, I, I could definitely cook 150 plates by myself, no problem. Oh my gosh, amazing. It's amazing what you can do because I can, I think I can cook 150 plates. I feel like that's what we do when we, we do our family events. Um, I'm I'm right in there in the kitchen. I I love to help my my mom cook, and you know whenever I'm I'm visiting with people in my own kitchen, hmm, that one sometimes can be challenging. See, so was, tarragon, was, love tarragon. Did you just, did you say tarragon? Yep. And so when you say succotash, tell me why and what is succotash? 
So succotash is a, it's an indigenous uh, cuisine uh, that started, uh, obviously. So basically what it is, is a lot of roasted vegetables. Mm. It could be, you could have a different, uh, sorry, sauteed vegetables with beans. Um, you know, I, I, I play a lot of homage to the three sisters. Um, so that's why I chose to do it this way. So I, I chose the butternut squash. I chose the beans and corn. Um, but you know, I've seen people do it with mushrooms. They've done it with tomatoes, lima beans, um, et cetera. And, you know, uh, some people use a little bit of uh, lemon juice and a little bit of uh, olive oil to make for a dressing kind of thing. Um, but I'm just going to actually use the chicken juice for the whole dish as the sauce and a little bit of a flavor for the succotash but it's just a ton of nutrients it's very healthy um all the fiber you can ask for all everything that you could really have to be whole in a complete meal and it's 100 percent indigenous that's been kind of just once again food taken from us put it in a different category and here we are introducing it again and what kind of beans i was just trying to look to see um from the recipe, beans what beans you chose? I just used uh, green beans, oh, some great. French okay. green beans. Yeah. So it was kind of uh, leftovers from some of the Thanksgiving stuff we had uh, that we did for our family. And nice. uh, yeah, so I just kind of got to use it. Can't go to waste. Mm -mm. So Sounds awesome. So that's another thing when it comes down to writing recipes for me. I, I don't know what I'm catching for fish. I don't know <laughs> what we're going to get. So it's really difficult. So when I plan my menu, it's, I hope I have enough of it. That's for sure. So there's another question here. Do, do um, let me see. It says, oh, so do we. She's there. Or she, I'm not sure. She or she, sorry. Um, they're saying, so do we, she must have been um, commenting that you said, ask people for recipes all the time. And I've never made anything the same thing twice. So that's awesome. So you're obviously good in the kitchen. So you're, yeah. you're just getting ready to, to plate this now? Is that um, yeah, where's so the chicken that you already cooked? I can't wait to see that. I got that right here in the foil. So basically what I do, I should check on the other one first because I kind of forgot about it already. So that's good. I'm just going to add a little bit of foil to that. So yeah, like I said, we've, uh, we've let that go for a little bit. We're just going to get a little bit crisp stuff. So I'm just going to add a little bit of foil to this now just so it doesn't overcook, doesn't burn. And it just gets real nice and juicy. Okay, that's that. So these beans here, we're on the final stage here. Some things that's really cool too is, um, I didn't get a chance to do it with this for today, is uh, to soak my beans like in a cedar water. So it really mm. gives a light, nice little bit of flavor to that as well. But- uh, That's amazing, like green beans? Uh, or no, like, uh, like, like the, 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 like the bean vegetable, bean the vegetable okay. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to add some parsley here to, um, to the chicken juice. Just add a little bit of flavor. Nice. And come on, your kids are going to come home from school soon and smell this amazing food. And just like that, isn't that medicine right there? <laughs> yeah, they just right? come home from school. Just kind of love sitting that. around, the, sitting around the table. Hey, man, you gonna, is that almost ready yet or what? So it's uh, this, what's really cool too is um, w with my company is I, I do a lot with my kids too. So they mm -hmm. uh, they like to help out and it gives them a chance to learn. Um, my daughter has been more of uh, she likes to learn how to cook. My son is more of uh, he likes the girls. He'd rather be. Hey. Uh, chasing that and learning but he's uh he wants to move out soon and go to college so you, you should have to learn sooner or later mm. but we've done uh, done some cooking together but uh, nice. my daughter it started probably when she was about five or six just like um i, I just wanted something that we could have a day of you know mm -hmm. my son and i were always going to the lacrosse arena so i was okay we need hockey you know okay so Thursdays was like daddy daughter time. So we just learned nice. how to cook. And so now she helps me out quite a bit. And, and uh, yeah, I've got her like cutting tuna and doing all those kind of things. Amazing. And, yeah, she's, uh, she's learning lots. So yeah, I'm just going to season that. these here a little bit. And we're almost ready to plate. Nice. This is so good. I, I feel all cozy. <laughs> 
getting ready to go, eh? So yeah. here's, yep. here's the final um, thing I've got for the bird. Oh my gosh, how perfect does that look? That's the bird from Country Heritage Park. That's I love it. it. Yes, yay. Yeah, that's uh, he's no Amazing. longer breathing, but he's uh, he, well, hey, you know, he sacrificed, he sacrificed exactly. Yeah, it's uh, that's, yeah, that's so good. The, the, the balance, right? Yeah, I'm gonna tag this uh video to their their page after, and I'm sure he's gonna really he's gonna appreciate it, or they're gonna appreciate it over at Country Heritage Park. I really enjoy I made my chicken, um over the weekend and you're right it it lasted you know what we did with it and uh, and it was delicious yeah was really good chicken so yeah it was a while like is uh it's like all right i haven't done a bird like this in a bit and i was like ah, what do i want to do do i want to smoke it and i was like ah that won't do too much as i'll have this be a lot harder than it needs to be and, but uh well, you're doing fabulous here. I'm loving this, to be honest with you. I never thought I'd be a, I'd enjoy the cooking, a cooking show, but uh, it's definitely fun. So and basically, you. here's um, kind of what this looks like in a bowl already. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Nice, colorful, really alive. Um, I'm actually doing something here in November. Um, I, I'm being a guest uh, chef um at this uh, fall fair here and actually tanya will be there as well which is pretty cool um but i'm actually doing a three sisters succotash with seared scallops um and i'll be doing like an online uh, or in live cooking demonstration with everybody as well which is going to be pretty cool so what I'm well, that's awesome and and actually so there's another cute message here i'm going to share it says uh, the 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 um the guest watching just got a call from a head of one of the largest unions in North America and had to tell him, we'll call you back. I'm online supporting Jeff with indigenous cooking online right now. Right on. That's so fun. Yeah. I love it. That's awesome. It's time, day. it's time to hang out and cook with medicine, right? And, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's about the connection to, you know, getting, having that nice family meal, having, your family sit around the table, laugh, joke, whatever, yeah. te tease each other as we like to do. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's uh, it's really cool. I'm going to share that. this in the uh, in the community too. I'll send it, put it on uh, Six Nations Facebook too. Maybe maybe they'd be interested to see some because this is pretty easy. It's it's pretty easy, like, yeah. It's just uh, all about. I, I think it's just the dance, right? You have to organize and choreograph. For a little bit um but once you got an idea of how everything should be like kitchen could be or like cooking can be pretty intimidating mm -hmm. uh, but it, it shouldn't be you know i think bob ross had it uh pretty good when he was just like there's only happy mistakes when it comes yes. to cooking so yeah i love that i love it i love this yeah this is really cool and i'm really really happy to be around to do this Thanks, Doug. Me too. This makes me feel good. I, like I said, uh, canceled a few of my meetings today and uh, I needed a little self-care day for myself, actually. And and I'm so happy it's, it's um, this was in it. I'm actually getting ready to go out to grandma's. We're going to go to um, to dinner and then we're going to go for a uh, a screening they're screening our show it was a movie that uh or a documentary that one of our community members created yeah part of his kind of journey to reconciliation which was pretty cool and it's called healing the scars of colonialism and it was a little documentary followed us around a couple like me and myself grandmother renee sherry saville and he put together this documentary and then he entered it in a couple of things and we won we won a um, an award in like Los Angeles. Yeah, well, holy. Yeah. So <laughs> so anyway, so they're gonna screen that for Culture Days in Halton Hills. So shout out to Halton Hills for for thinking of us, and we're gonna go, you know, watch it and then answer some questions and yeah. So. Oh, cool. awesome! Yeah, that's that's great. So here's kind of the plate what I've got right here. It looks so amazing. And what I'll do is I'm just going to finish it with my sauce. 
oh yeah, that you didn't even need the sauce. That looks like it looks great without the sauce, but uh, you need sauce. Come on. Always. Oh my gosh, my mouth just watered. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> and that's that. That's my that, roasted chicken. Brother, with you did a great sisters. job. Succotash. Amazing. And yeah, the, and there's so many things you could do with this bird after, you know what I mean? You got the breasts, you got the wings, you got the legs. So whoever's uh wants the whatever, yep. make make it happen for them. Amazing. But, but that's uh, my roasted chicken with uh, roasted panju and three sister succotash. You're awesome, Doug. I'm excited. I'm excited to, I don't know, continue growing our relationship and see what else is next. And and uh, I'll come and visit you in the next week or two. Awesome. And we'll see yeah, you then. This, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, Nyawa, thank you. Yeah. See ya. Okay. Bye.